Hi there. Until now, we'll learn the three basic languages. Now, I'm going to implement another project using CFC language, which is an abbreviation of continuous function chart. First of all, I'll test the final project. After that, I'll explain a sorting station that is a predefined system inside factory IO. Then, I'll start the programming step using CFC language, which will be completed in the next video. SFC language will be started after that. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell to receive the latest and the greatest content I will be posting through the channel. Well, let's start the video by testing the final project. As you see, here is a control box. The selector has two modes, and can be used to select manual and automatic modes. When the manual mode is selected, the start push button can be used to run the entry conveyor. My manual program can be easily extended to control other pieces of equipment. Now, let's select the automatic mode and press the start push button, to start the sorting process. The most effective equipment in this project is this vision sensor. It sends a number from 1 to 6 to my controller, based on the color and shape of these products. Well, if I press the stop push button, the first conveyor will be stopped immediately, but the second part, after the vision sensor, will remain on about 15 seconds, to move the last product completely. Again, let's start the sorting process. As you saw, the stop push button stops the whole process after 15 seconds. But the emergency button can be used, to turn off all devices immediately. After resolving all emergency conditions, all items on the second conveyor, must be removed too. After that, the operator may want to reset these numbers, which show how many products of each category, have been moved. Now, let me disable the emergency button, and then restart the sorting station. Now, let's start the project from the first step, designing a sorting station inside factory IO. Alright, in this video, I've used a predefined project, whose name is sorting station. Similarly, you can find it and use it without any changes. Now, let me explain some of its equipment. As you see, the sorting station uses three pivot arm sorters. Each arm has two actuators. Let me activate them. Also, there are two conveyors to move products. Let's activate them too. As I've mentioned, this vision sensor is the most important device in this project. When there is not any product below the sensor, it will send zero to my controller, otherwise, based on the color and shape of the products, it will send a number from 1 to 6. Pay attention to numbers, which will be used to categorize the products into three groups, based on their shape. Note that, this sensor will be used too, to detect when a product has been moved completely. In consequence, the first conveyor must be turned on automatically, to move a new product. As you know, each push button, sensor, or actuator has a specific name which can be modified. 
let's use the default name. Here, I can see the name of all sensors and push buttons, and on the other side, the name of actuators such as conveyors and sorter arms can be seen. Now, let's launch Codesys to start the programming step. Let's create a new standard project. Like the previous videos, this is my virtual controller, but let's select the CFC language to use it for the first time. If you remember, during the previous project, a global variable list was explained and used. Again, let me create a global variable list. I will use that to define variables, which will be connected to the equipment inside factory IO. First, let me define variables that will be connected to sensors, push buttons, and so on. Note that, I can also right click and select add variable, to open this window, and then define variables. Now, I'm going to define variables, which will be used to control the actuators such as conveyors, sorter arms, and so on. Alright, I've defined variables, which will be shared with factory I.O. software. As you saw, the sorting station has two manual and automatic modes. So, let's create two program organization units, corresponding to each mode. Right now, there are three program organization units. My controller will start his work from this one. As you see, it's empty. First, let's write a simple program to use the manual mode of the selector, to call the manual program organization unit. Now, let's write a simple program inside the manual POU. As you know, it is usually used to test devices individually. Now, I'm writing a simple program, just to control the first conveyor with the start push button. Similarly, my program can be used to control other devices manually. Okay, 
This simple program can be repeated to control other devices manually. Let's skip it and write a program related to the automatic mode. First, its POU must be called, like the manual mode. Now, if the auto mode is selected, this POU, whose name is auto, will be executed. First, let me define a new variable, whose name is running mode. Its value will be changed, by the emergency, stop and start push buttons. If it's equal to true or 1, it means the sorting station must be in running mode, otherwise the sorting station must be stopped. Because this variable determines an important state, and may be used by future program organization units, let me change its scope to global variable. Also, instead of using the FIO list, let me define it, inside a new global variable list. Now, I'm going to add an RS instruction. Now, I want to use the start, stop and emergency buttons, as three inputs to set and reset the running mode variable. Remember, I've defined them inside the FIO list, as three global variables. As you know, the stop and emergency buttons are normally closed. So, let me invert their states. Also, both of them can reset the running mode variable. So, an OR instruction must be used between these two inputs and the R's instruction. Alright, this simple program uses the start push button to activate the running mode variable, and uses the stop and emergency button to reset it. As you see, a program in CFC language is similar to function block diagrams, but it doesn't have any network, to arrange instructions. For example, I can use the R's instruction here, or here. But if a program is written in CFC language, the order of execution will be determined by these green numbers. Right now, the current program implements the OR logic between the stop push button and the emergency button, then determines the output of the RS instruction based on its inputs, and finally, updates the running mode variable. I'll complete this project in the next video. Thanks for watching my content, if you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, 
then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.